So let's proceed to the next application of your definite integral, which is your volume. So from area, so since we already know how to solve the area of a plane in the x and y plane, so, so to recap, so you're going to use the vertical strip and then the counterpart of which is the horizontal strip and each respective method has its own formula so you also know how to graph and solve the area of polar equations so at this point so we are now ready to solve the volume so the concept that you have learned from the area will still be applied here in the volume because for the volume to be generated so that's why it's called solid of revolution because we'll be rotating the area in a certain axis 360 degrees so to give you an example or to give you a brief um, overview of what a solid of revolution looks like so for example this is your x and y plane <clears throat> And then this is your, let's say, you're going to have a rectangle in the first quadrant. Okay, so let's say you're going to rotate this one in the y-axis. So meaning the volume generated will be a cylinder. So that's what, so that's what you will do here in this topic so you'll be rotating areas and the vertical and horizontal strip will still be applied on the concept of solving the volume <clears throat> okay so what is a solid of um what is the volume of a solid of revolution so let's define first the solid of revolution so it's a solid generated when a plane region so let's try to dissect each term here so plane region is talking about the area so lying entirely on one side of a fixed line in its plane and is revolved about that line so meaning the solid generated is revolved about a certain fixed line on the plane so x and y plane y and z plane so depending on what plane you are referring to but for most of our problems that we're going to solve is that our plane is in the x and y plane or in the rectangular coordinate system <clears throat> so the fixed line is also called as the axis of the solid of revolution or the axis of rotation in simpler terms So I think it's it's easy to understand so solid of revolution so a certain area is rotated about a fixed line and that fixed line is called the axis of the solid of revolution or the axis of rotation <clears throat> okay so to give you a further um, graphical idea so for example you are given this figure so you consider the area bounded by the line y equals 3x so y is y equals 3x is it uh, is an equation of a line so this is the blue one the x-axis is of course this line here x-axis and then x equals 1 so x equals 1 is this vertical line here so meaning the area bounded is this green region. So let's say we're going to rotate it in the x-axis. So notice that the volume generated is a cone. So again, we rotate our area on a certain axis. So it may be x or y-axis or let's say 
certain fixed line so it may not always be the x or y axis so it could be x equals 1 y equals negative 1 so as long as um, that fixed line or the axis of rotation is being um, declared okay so notice that upon generating the solid so notice this particular area here this is your disk <clears throat> or this is what you call as your differential volume so how did so how did this disk um, was formed so again coming from the vertical strip method or horizontal strip so for example you're going to have a vertical strip here so of course if you're going to rotate this vertical strip so again this is what you call as your differential area your vertical strip so if you're going to rotate this 360 degrees so notice that it's going to create a disk Okay, so that's why the thickness of this disk is still dx because it's coming from the vertical strip so later on once we go to the formulas i'm going to explain um, how we derive each formula and why does this formula looks like this so on and so forth Okay, so, so another example is a circle rotated about the y-axis. So notice that the circle is not um, in line with the z-axis. <clears throat> so it's z-axis rather. So rotating the area of the circle 360 degrees will create a donut. So notice that there's a hole in the middle. So of course that will be the the empty space on the center so for most of the so for most of the problems that you're going to solve later so some of the areas that you're going to solve um, have holes in it and not always that your figures are in perfect shape polygons so for example you're going to solve for the, the rotated volume of the square so most likely you're not going to um, encounter those figures but you're going to encounter areas um, of curves so I think if you have solved your problem set for the area so those are the kind of areas that you're going to um, revolve or create a volume <clears throat> so most likely curves <clears throat> excuse Okay, so to give you a better idea on how the volume was generated, so try to take a look on this um, shaded region and it will be rotated about the x-axis. Okay, so notice that the differential strip becomes a differential volume and same thickness because again the thickness of your vertical strip is um, dx So another example so this one is rotated about the y-axis so this time the strip is now horizontal or the disk created is now horizontal
Okay, so let's have another example. So try to um, observe also the the graph on the left. So this will show you the vertical strip. On the right side, will um, it will show you the differential volume. <clears throat> So it will create first the volume and then afterwards is it's going to show the the differential disk on the right and the differential strip on the left so notice that the differential strip is consistent from left to right so meaning the top and bottom equations are the same so the top portion the top um, portion of the strip is touching the same equation all throughout and the bottom equation is touching this, the same equation all throughout. So same goes for this example also. So notice that the, ver that the horizontal strip on the left side and the differential strip on the right side is the same. So it's touching the same equations right and left. So that's the same concept as your area wherein the top, the top equation must be touching the same equation all throughout um wherever you're going to place your strip <clears throat> so this is another example wherein the area was rotated um not on the x or y axis <clears throat> So again, um, the same concept is still used. So the vertical and horizontal strip must be um, consistent all throughout the distribution of the area. <clears throat> Alright, so that's the idea behind the generation of the volume. So let's go to the different formulas. <clears throat> so we're going to have um, two methods. So the first method is the method of disk. And then the second method is the method of washer. I mean, it's going to be three, but um, these two um, equations or these two methods can just be simplified into one because the concept of the disk and the washer are the same so if i'm going to put it in this manner so um, the method of disk and washer is more likely let's say the vertical strip and then the third method which is the method of shells will be the counterpart or the other method so let's say if you're going to solve the problem using vertical strip so the other method will be the horizontal strip so that's the idea behind this um, concept <clears throat> okay so since we're going to analyze your um, differential volume which is now the disk because your differential volume looks like a disk so again that's why it's um, it formed into a disk because again as we try to rotate the differential strip so the differential strip is horizontal and then for the vertical disk the, the strip is also vertical so again it's being rotated about 360 degrees with the axis so also notice that the strips are perpendicular to the axis of rotation 
So for example, in this vertical disk, let's say this one is the x-axis. So notice that the strip is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So same goes for your horizontal disk. So you're going to use a horizontal strip, but it's being rotated about the y-axis. So same goes for your washer. That will be the same concept. So for example, we're going to create a axis here. So for example, I'm going to create a horizontal strip here. And this one is a vertical strip. So again, notice that the strip is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So the difference between the two methods, disk or washer, is that the washer has a hole on the center, but the disk is, um, there's no hole. But the derivation of the formula will be the same all throughout your um, derivation of the formula for the disk and the washer. So how did, so how did they derive the formulas? So I already gave you the specific formula for the vertical and horizontal disk. So para mas, so for you to easy, so for you to um, for you to have an easy access on the formulas. So if you don't want to derive the formulas, so this so these are the formulas for the respective vertical and horizontal disks of your method of disk and washer. So, of course, so there are some students who are in very, um, they're very curious on how the formula was generated. So, the basic formula for volume, so this will be area times thickness. So, that will be the, the basic formula for the volume coming from solid geometry. So, that will be the cross-sectional area times the thickness. So one great example of this one is a rectangular parallelepiped. So as we know, the volume for this rectangular parallelepiped is length times width times height. So before this became length times width times height, so we first determined the area on the cross section and then multiplied it with the height. So this will be length times width, that will be the area times the height. So notice that this is the cross-sectional area times the thickness. So that's the um, basic concept behind the derivation of the formula. <clears throat> so if you go to our disk, so note that, uh, notice that our cross-sectional area is a circle. And the area for the circle is pi r squared. So that's why you have pi r squared here. And then our thickness, this will be the differential height. And again, coming from the horizontal strip, this differential height will become your differential y. So again, that's why your dh becomes dy because it's coming from the thickness of your horizontal strip. So for the other one, this particular dh is also your dx since you are using the vertical strip. So that's why this translates into dx and dy depending on what particular disk you are using. So for the radius, so notice that um, our radius is this portion of the circle. So this strip is also the radius. So to solve for the radius, that will be x right, that will be the rightmost portion of the horizontal strip, minus the leftmost portion which is x left. So for the vertical strip is you're going to have y top as the 
edge of the vertical strip and the bottom part is y bottom so again using distance formula the radius is equal to y top minus y bottom for horizontal disk that will be x right minus x left now since your left and bottom part of your strip is touching the axis so it's touching the x and y axis so this becomes zero this portion also becomes zero so that's why the formula is simplified further by the remaining term which is y top for the vertical disk squared so again the differential height is now dx because we're using the vertical strip for the horizontal disk your radius is now x right squared so again it's only x right squared because x left is zero so our differential height is dy because we are using the horizontal strip so the pi is taken outside the equation so notice that we are still using the concept of vertical and horizontal strips to create our disk <clears throat> So next is we go to washer. So this is the same concept as your disk. So you're going to use volume times uh, volume equals area times thickness. So, so that will be the same. But for this particular concept is we're going to be using our knowledge on our solid geometry wherein we're going to solve for the net area so way back in your solid geometry so to solve for this net area or let's say the area of the washer so one simple technique here is you're going to solve first for the area of the big circle and then minus the area of the small circle to get the area of the washer so that will be the concept that we that will that we'll be using on this method so the formula is not um changing because again it's still pi r squared times the thickness so the top portion or the cross-sectional area for both horizontal and vertical washer is still a circle pi r squared but this time is we're going to solve twice we're going to solve first the bigger circle and then you're going to solve next the smaller circle to get the net area so the thickness is consistent all throughout the different areas presented so that's why the <clears throat> the differential height um, will not change regardless of which area you're going to solve so of course to solve this one since we're going to solve first for the outer circle so notice that going towards this distance this will be x right so in the vertical disk this will be our y top so our x right and our y top will become the outer radius <clears throat> So for the smaller circle, so this will become the inner radius. This will be, so this distance going to this portion is x left. And going to this distance is y bottom. So x left and y bottom will be the inner radius. Okay, so notice that if this one is pi r outer squared minus pi r inner squared so this will be simplified into pi times r outer squared minus r inner squared which is this term here so r outer for vertical washer that will be y top squared 
and the inner radius will be y bottom squared so for a horizontal washer x right will be the outer radius so x r squared minus the inner radius x left squared so that's how the formulas were derived for um, these two methods so method of disk and method of washer <clears throat> So do you have questions at this point? Okay, so let's, let's proceed. Okay, so let's try to solve the problem. So again, um, you can take other calculator at this point. <clears throat> So for us to save some time, I'm going to present you with the graph immediately. So we're going to solve for the volume revolved by the um, by revolving the plane region bounded by y equals square root of x in the x-axis and in the line x equals 4 about the x-axis. So notice we are rotating about the x-axis. So again, our concept is it must be that the strip is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So that's why we are using a vertical strip. Okay, so this is the graph. So again, I'm just going to show you the graph to save some time. But again, on your own and in your problem set, you're going to create um, solutions and your graph on your own. So graph, then you provide solutions on how you have generated your graph. And then the next one is you're going to also solve for the points of intersection with solution. So especially these points, so you must provide solutions for these ones. So maybe in tabular method the one that i showed you in the previous meetings or you may use equating coefficients as long as you have provided um, efficient solutions in the graph and in the points of intersection all right so we're going to rotate first the vertical strip so again since we know we're going to rotate about the x-axis so after generating your graph, you're going to create a vertical strip. And then of course, you're going to label your parts. So this one is Y top. So Y top is touching the blue graph. That will be the Y equals square root of X. And then Y bottom or Y lower is touching the X axis, which is equal to zero. So again, if we're going to try to determine the radius, that will be y top minus y bottom. So that will be square root of x minus 0, which is just square root of x. So generating the volume. So you need to generate the volume as well. So that, um, so that will be the volume. So again, if you don't want to derive the formula, or you just want to directly use the formula, so if, again, vertical strip, so vertical strip is equal to, so this will be pi, so this will be y top squared. Ah, so it, Let's try to change the equation. So volume is equal to pi integral of y top squared dx from x1 to x2. So again, if you don't want to derive the formula, so you may directly use the equation. 
as long as that what you have provided in the equation is valid upon getting the correct answer. So pi and then y top is equal to square root of x squared dx. Then our limits of integration is again in the x direction because we are differentiating with respect to x. So that will be from 0 to 4. So 0 to 4. So at this point, you can now plug this one in your calculator. So again, given that your given equation in your paper is correct, because of course, if your equation is not correct, but your answer is correct, so um, I won't give credit to it because the equation you provided is um, incorrect, diba? Right? So in my style also, so notice that I'm, I'm dealing with a square root. I'm going to try to simplify this one first before plugging it in the calculator. So this becomes x squared. Uh, this becomes, I mean, x. <coughs> x dx. Okay, so again, you may now use your calculator. So the volume, huh? 8 pi. So 8 pi. Or this is, I think, 25.16. So cubic units. So again, since we are in volume, so this will be cubic units. So that will be the answer. So again, since you are, um, you are provided with a formula, so I think the the huge portion of your solution will be coming from the graphing aspect. Graphing and determining the points of intersection because I think that the um, determining the volume is um, pretty much simple because you have the formula and we um, you can use your calculator. Alright, so questions? Okay, so CC or okay, no? Okay, so let's go to um, this is the solution. So if you're going to derive the formula, so this one is the steps. So again, it should be that your um, graph later on in your um, exam or in your problem set will be in this format. So everything is shown in the graph. <clears throat> so balikan in Doha. You incorporate the some parts here on the right side. So of course since you are solving for the volume, so it should be that your graph is also in volume form. Uh, uh, but as long as you generated the volume and you def um you determine the important parts. Okay, so of course if you're just going to show me this one, you know, without the volume, so I'm just going to give partial score to it because again you're solving for the volume, but um in the graph it's just this um output so it should be that your output of your graph should correspond to what application you're going to solve so for example if you're going to solve for area so it should be that um, your graph is solving for the area I can see that the graph is for area and then for volume I can see that the graph is for volume All right <clears throat> so strict lang tadi rin napita kay of course it's also for your 
for your for your exam later so i'm going to train you now so that in the exam is that you won't be have you won't be having a hard time and of course there will be less um, arguments with your scores diba right? okay so let's go to this method so the equations presented to be rotated about the y-axis so again since it's rotated about the y-axis the strip should be perpendicular to the axis of rotation so that's why you're going to use the horizontal strip okay so this is the horizontal strip so we're going to create a volume that would be the volume so this portion here is your x right and x right will be determined by this graph here the red one so converting it in terms of x so x equals cube root of y so your x right is now cube root of y and then of course x left so if you want to determine x left is just zero and then this will be the differential y so rotated about the y axis all right so since again um, i have provided you with the graph so again what you need to do on your own later is you're going to provide the solutions for the graph as well as the points of intersection so this one is so 0 and 3 ang ato ang limits so again by formula so using the formula for horizontal disk this will be x right squared dy from y1 to y2 so this will be cube root of y squared dy so from 0 to 3 0 to 3 so if you're going to use your calculator at this point so it might take a while to get the answer because you are dealing with a radical expression that's cube root and then you square the cube root so probably um, it will take some time for the answer to appear so, so let's try to skip lang so the answer is 11.76 okay, i think it will take about three minutes two to three minutes for the answer to appear So again, take note that in your calculator, the default variable is x. <clears throat> Alright, so questions or clarifications so far? Okay, so let's proceed with the washer now. So it's just a disc with a hole in the middle. So we're going to rotate about the x-axis again. So we're going to use the vertical strip because it should be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So notice that the volume generated here 
will be a washer. Okay, and then so since there's enough there's not enough space for us to generate the volume okay so again you label y top you label y bottom because this will be important later on how to um, plug in the values for the formula so also you need to determine also the points of intersection so again you may use tabular method but tabular method is limited because again what if your points of intersection are in decimal places it's not a whole number so um, you might have um, you might find it difficult in finding the points of intersection so the best way for this one is equating coefficients I mean I mean equating equations rather so not equating coefficients so we're going to equate this one with the other equation okay so volume for washer is pi so again since this is vertical strip so this is y top squared minus y bottom squared dx from x1 to x2 so pi and then y top is square root of x this is the blue graph and it's also being highlighted here in the graph so this will be square root of 8x squared then minus the y bottom which is x squared so this will be x squared squared dx so again our limits of integration is in the x direction so this will be from 0 to 2 so 0 So again, you may plug this one in your calculator, but you can still simplify this one to help your calculator a bit in solving it faster. So you're going to have 8x and then minus x to the power of 4 dx. So you may plug this one compared to the previous line. Okay, so what's the answer? I think this is so 48 over 5i. So how much is this in decimal? Um, 30 point 30.16 um, cubic units. <clears throat> So that's how you solve the volume for washer. <clears throat> so again, I think the difficult part that you're going to encounter is the graphing aspect. Right, so this is the solution. OK, 
Okay, so let's try to solve a problem wherein you're going to rotate it about a certain line. So you're going to rotate it in x equals negative 1. So this one is a vertical line. So we're still going to use the horizontal strip because that is perpendicular to I mean the axis of rotation. So we're going to create this graph. So we'll create first the hole. Create the bigger thing. Pasensya na kayo sa drawing. So this will be the washer. Okay, so this is the washer generated. So since we are rotating about x equals negative 1, so our radius for the outer and inner circle may differ because this will be our point of reference, the axis of rotation. So notice that this becomes our inner radius. And then this becomes our outer radius. So for our inner radius, so going towards this portion here, the left strip, so we are traveling one unit or one unit measurement from x equals negative 1. So meaning the inner radius is equal to 1 or 1 plus x left because it's touching x left. But since x left is 0, so you can just simplify this one as the inner radius is equal to 1. Alright, so I think you understood. So have you understood this part so far? So 1 plus x left. So again, we're traveling one unit going towards the x left portion. So that's one unit. And then plus the equation touching the left, um, um, the left side of the strip. So since it's 0, so that's why the inner radius is just equal to 1. So for the outer radius, so this one is 0 again, the x equals 0. So it's traveling first 1 unit and then plus x right, the whole strip, which is the length is x right. So meaning our outer radius is 1 plus x right. Okay, so have you have you understood this point so far for the inner and outer radius? So if we're going to apply the formula, so again the formula is um, so pi. So again, since we are determining or using the horizontal strip, so instead of x right minus x left. So we're going to go back to the inner radius, I mean the outer radius rather, squared, minus the inner radius squared. So again, since we are in the differential, I mean, the, I mean in the horizontal strip, so this will be dy from y1 to y2. <clears throat> so this is pi, and then our limits of integration is from negative to to 2 so negative 2 to 2 our outer radius is 1 plus x right squared and then minus 1 squared that will be our inner radius so we have pi then negative 2 to 2 
So this becomes 1 plus the square root of 4 minus y squared squared minus 1 squared dx. So you can now plug this one in your calculator <coughs> and get the volume. So again, it may take some time because we are dealing with a radical expression. Um, which part? So if you, I if I um if you plug in x right, a uh, dy dy dy. So this one is y. <clears throat> so thank you for pointing that one out. So this one is dy dy. So we are in dy. Okay, so the answer is, I think it's 72.99 cubic units. So if we're going, so if I'm going to show you the, the, the solution from my reference, so this is the, the, the solution coming from the reference. So notice that the declaration of x right and x left is a bit different. So for example, this one is our x right. So this one is our x right. So we're going towards the axis of rotation. So minus negative one because I don't know the reason behind it why it's minus one minus negative one squared <clears throat> but if you try to simplify this one later so it will still result to what we have solved prior to this slide so this becomes a four minus y squared plus one right? so i think what we solve beforehand is one plus four minus y squared so for the other term, so notice that it has 0 minus negative 1 squared. And what we solve in the previous slide is just 1. But so I think it's, I mean, the, what I taught you in the previous slide is simpler to understand because you are referring your distances from the axis of rotation. So this one is, I don't know why it's minus. So... From x right, so you minus a certain distance of negative 1. So I don't know why you minus it, but try to decipher it also on your own because I'm a bit confused on um, this solution. So I just copied this solution from a book, but I solved the problem on what I understood on my own. So the authors have different different styles of presenting their solutions. So just try to review this in the recording later. All right. So questions so far for this um, problem. Okay, so let's proceed to the third method. So this is the method of shells, or in the longer name, it's cylindrical shells. So the cylindrical shell, so that's why it's called cylindrical shell, because um, once you rotate that particular strip, it will result into a cylindrical shell. So what is the difference between the this washer compared to the shell is that in our so for example in our 
disc and washer. So we rotated it perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So for example, if this one is our triangle, then we try to rotate it in the x-axis. So if we're going to use the disc and washer method, so we're going to use the vertical step because it should be perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Now for the method of shell, so again, as what I told you earlier, so this will be an alternative method because your shell will be parallel to the axis of rotation. So instead of vertical strip, you're going to use horizontal strip. And again, that will be parallel to the axis of rotation. So that's why when you rotate this particular strip, it's going to create a cylindrical shell. So cylindrical shell against the previous method, which is a disc. So, bali mo na siya ang difference sa duha. So, again, for shell, is that your strip is parallel to the axis of rotation. So, parallel. So, earlier, the strip is perpendicular if you're going to use um, horizontal, I mean, if you're going to use the disc and washer method. So, for shells, this would be an alternative method. So, I think it's just like the vertical and horizontal method for the area. So again, if you're not um, if you're not interested on in how the formula was derived, so these are the formulas. So for vertical shell, this will be the formula and for a horizontal shell, this is the formula. So vertical shell is rotated about the y-axis because again, it should be parallel. This is rotated about the x-axis. So again, for the derivation, for you to understand the derivation, so if this is your um, shell, so you're going to cut it. So imagine if the paper is rolled up, so um, it, the better way to imagine this one is you get a bond paper and then you try to roll it into a cylinder and then if, you, if you're going to open that cylinder so it's going to create this um, plate here or let's say the bond paper in your case so in solving the volume so again um, for us to better understand this portion so this will be the vertical strip rotated about the y-axis. So this will be the differential um, area. So this will be dx. On the other side, this will be dy. So again, if we try to open this one up, so this will be a length times width times height because you're going to have a rectangular parallelepiped or a rectangular prism. So I think those are the correct terms, I think. So again, in solving the volume, so this portion here, um, the length here, the length is the circumference of the circle, this one here. This is the circumference of the circle. So again, when you try to open your bond paper, so again, you roll up your bond paper, then if you try to open it up, so the top portion is the circle, the circumference of the circle. So that's why it's 2 pi r. So the height is this portion here. This would be our height. And again, in this particular height, will translate to whatever strip you're going to use. So in this case, this will be 
y top minus y bottom and in the in, in the horizontal shell this will be x right minus x left so that will be your height and your differential radius or the delta r will be your dx and your dy so this is delta r because again this is the the, the radius of the to so not the radius but the change in radius and that's why it's delta r <clears throat> and this will serve as our thickness so that's why when you try to um, plug in the formula length times width times height this will be the formula and again our limits of integration will depend on the height and that height will be coming from the strip so that's why as you notice the height will become y top minus y bottom or x right minus x left and then the radius so the radius is just going towards this portion here so if vertical strip that will be just x distance or the horizontal shell that will be just y distance for the radius so that's why this is the portion here <clears throat> so again if you don't want to to know the derivation of the formula so just go with this final format All right, so let's try to determine the, the problem in the first example. So again, earlier we have used this as a vertical strip. So now is since we are going to use the method of shell, so let's try to compare if we're still going to get the same answer. So we take first the shell. Okay, so this will be the shell created, then the volume. So again, by formula of a horizontal shell. So volume is equal to so 2 pi on the outside and then y x right minus x left dy from y1 to y2. So this is the formula. If again if you don't want to derive the formula using the concept. So 2 pi and then our limits of integration is now from 0 to 2. So this will be 0 to 2. And then y. So x right is x equals 4. x left is the equation. So x left. So in terms of x, this becomes x equals y squared. So x left is x equals y squared. So this is y squared dy. So you may plug this one in your calculator, but again, may help your calculator a bit in the simplification process. So this becomes 4y minus y cubed dy. So the volume so I think in confidence, this is still 8 pi or 25.13 cubic units. All right, so... <clears throat> This is the solution.
Okay, so questions or clarifications so far? So, katong ganina sa previous problem for the washer. So, you may do the solution as what I did. Or if you don't, um, if you're not comfortable with the solutions I presented, so as long as I I understand the solutions that you have provided, so pwede na siguro. Alright, so this will be the problem sets that you're going to solve. So you're going to have eight problems for the method of disk and washer. So I don't know which portion on the eight problems are washers. Basta because again, the concept of the disk and the washers or disk or rings are the same. And then you're going to have eight problems for the method of cylinders. Okay. So if you don't have any more further questions, so that will be it for today. Again, you're going to work on your problem sets for the entire week. So we're going to meet again on Wednesday. That will be on May 12th.